You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. The world is always on. But you shouldn't be. Put junk sleep to bed. At Mattress Firm's Black Friday Now Sale, save up to 60% on Sealy with queen mattresses starting at $279.99. Talk to a sleep expert today and unjunk your sleep. When you bundle your renters and auto insurance with Progressive, you could save money, but it doesn't cover any terrible memories living rent-free in your head. Hey, just wanted to remind you of that time your kicker missed the extra point and lost the game. Even though he'd literally never missed an extra point, he chose this playoff game to miss. Yeah, I just noticed you hadn't thought about that in a bit. Wouldn't want you to miss, you know, thinking about it. Sorry, we can't save you from that memory. But we could save you money bundling your renters and auto insurance with Progressive. Coverage from Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and third-party insurers. Renters insurance and bundle discount not available in all states or situations. <laughs> Everybody and welcome back to Who Did What Now, the history podcast that's not your history class. Betty Zoid, with me, your exceptional host, Kerry Charlewood, history hussy and reader of books. I realised I didn't give any context last week when I started the Betty Zoids. Well, so the plan is that every week, all going well, if I don't have a breakdown, I will have a main episode released every Tuesday, and a betty sode released on a Thursday. Obviously, the main episode will be, like, whatever main story that I can cover in 20 to 30 minutes. And the betty sode is a little bit of history. I know I could have been normal and called it a mini sode, but let's face it, that wasn't going to happen. So yeah, I decided to call it a betty sode because it's little bits of history. Yeah, so, like, it's going to be a little bit of history, so it's... Like, it's probably something that I either couldn't flesh out to be, like, a main episode or or maybe I couldn't fit it in, you know? Sometimes things are a tight squeeze, you know what I mean? But, but I also want to talk about the little bits of history that we kind of overlook sometimes as well. And something I would love to do in the future uh, of when people, if people want to share their personal histories or, like, family history, stuff like that. I know I have a few stories to tell that I am, I think I'm legally allowed to talk about. (laughs) I'm fairly certain, but whom's to say? Oh, we'll find out. Because history is more than just dates and numbers and battles. It's the people that lived within it. Like, an event is only an event because of people. Because it affects people. But since it is the spooky season, I'm going to continue telling you about the origins of Halloween. And this week, we're going to talk about trick or treating, which is so much weirder than you'd think. So the origins of trick or treating, if you really want to go back to the very start, we are heading back to everybody's favourite pagans, the Celts. While they were celebrating Samhain, which we discussed last week, if you haven't listened to the Samhain episode, you don't have to have listened to it to know what's going on here, but it's always good for context. So go back and listen to it. And rate and review five stars. Woo! Say nice things. So initially what they would do is they would dress up as the she. Otherworldly spirits wouldn't recognise them and basically wouldn't fuck with them, you know? So they would be safe from the she. And in the sort of areas where the Celts were, like, you know, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, this tradition would continue on. So yeah, by the time the Middle Ages comes around, the Mummers comes into it. So people would wear straw masks and go from like door to door in costume and you would provide an act. So you would like recite a poem or sing a song or uh, dance a wee jig. You would have to do something, you would earn your treat. 
So would you go get like food and drink? And up until, and like up until the 90s, at the very least in Ireland, in rural Ireland anyway, the mummers was still a thing. So when you went from house to house, you would perform, you'd do a wee song, a wee jig, whatever, and people would give you money. They didn't give you candy or sweets or chocolate. Nah, they gave you money. Because I remember doing it when I moved here. And what we did, because we were fucking smart, so not only did we go around the houses, but like every village had like six or seven pubs. So we went to every pub and did, you know, the wee, you know, the wee jig or whatever. And there was like a whip round in the pub and everybody's drunk as farts. So they're just like throwing change at us. And we were all for those punts and pennies, let me tell you. It was glorious. So let's get back on track. Back to, back to this. In the 1400s, as part of like Hallowmas, Hallowtide, whatever you want to call it, it was, it was very much like a Christian thing. Children and, and some adults, basically the less fortunate, the poor people, the, the peasants, they would travel around in costume to like the wealthier people. And I think the idea was to represent the dead, effectively. And they would like sing and say wee poems. And, and so they would go out to the rich people, effectively people who weren't poor as fuck, and they would ask them for soul cakes in return for them praying for their souls. Which sounds incredibly exciting and not at all really sad and depressing. So this souling, as it was known, basically happened in like um, sort of the more Christian-y parts of Britain in the Netherlands, South Austria, Southern Germany. Eh, basically where all the uh, incredibly religious people were. By the 1500s, by the 16th century, guising comes into play. So... Like, we know it started by the 16th century. It could have been going on before that, but nobody wrote shit down. But, you know, sometimes with access to a time machine, we can have to rely on the, the small accounts we have. So we know it started in the sort of 16th century, but by the 18th and 19th century, we're ve- it's very much happening, like, across the board. Sort of Scotland, Ireland, um, Wales. So, like, in Ireland, there would be a man. So basically, there would be one adult dressed as a white horse, a mare, in fact, and he would basically take the youngins, um, like, from house to house, and they would recite these, like, pagan poems in exchange for goodies, for food. And the way it worked was, if you were kind enough to donate some lovely goodies to the Larvan and his crew, you would receive good fortune from the Makala. But if you didn't, the Makala would bring you misfortune. Huh? I ah, see, it's starting to it's starting to weave its way in now. In Scotland, children would go, you know, from house to house. And I don't want to say blackface, but they, they painted their faces black and they dressed all in white. And they would, you know, do the same thing. It'd be like rhymes and poetry and stuff like that. And Being a part of a royal family might seem enticing, but more often than not, it comes at the expense of everything else. Like your freedom, your privacy and sometimes even your head. Wondery's new podcast, Even the Royals, pulls back the curtain on royal families, past and present, from all over the world, to show you the darker side of what it means to be royalty. From icons like Grace Kelly, Oscar-winning actress turned Princess of Monaco, who the world saw as the ultimate good girl. She mastered playing a happy wife and mother, but beneath it all, she was desperately lonely. Grace spent her whole life working towards perfection, and it ultimately cost her her happiness. Or King Ludwig II from Bavaria. He was only 18 when his father died, leaving the crown to him and a duty to rule that he never wanted. He refused to lead, and used the funds from the royal treasury to further his extreme love of opera. But this choice eventually cost him the crown, and his life. Follow even the royals on the Wondery app, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge even the royals ad-free right now on Wondery Plus. And if they were not, you know, treated well, we'd basically uh, threaten you if um, you weren't good to them. You know what I mean? Like, they were gonna, they were gonna, they were gonna fuck your shit up, you know? And um, in Wales, in Wales it actually started as, like, adult men would basically go around, peasants usually, going around from, you know, place to place, Dressed up as the dead, uh, going round asking for stuff, and they would have 
They would try and look as, like, as scary as possible because they were meant to be, like, representatives of the dead. And something that happened with Geising, something you see along the sort of Celtic nations, is because they're travelling at night, they're usually travelling... You know, they had lanterns, but not ordinary lanterns. They were carved out of turnips, which we'll talk about another time. Now let's skip forward. So Geising and mummers and things like that, the sort of the costume and, and a little bit of that, was brought to America with the influx of immigrants from Ireland especially because they really went out there because they didn't really have a choice but the practice of this it didn't really you know it happened a little bit but not very often so basically around the 1870s the sort of the idea reemerges with sort of the immigrant class especially with the ragamuffin day starting in basically around about New York and Chicago and places like that, on Thanksgiving, children would go around the streets asking, you know, goodies. And they would be like a with like candies, fruits, pennies. And, you know, initially they would be dressed up as hobos. That's right, hobos. They wanted to dress like vagrants and beggars and, and stuff like that. So kids would go around in costumes begging strangers for treats. Like, that's, that's how it started. And because of this, the kids were nicknamed as ragamuffins. And something else that would happen along this time was they would, like, nick somebody's wheel and be like, yeah, I'm not going to give it back to you unless you give me, like, the candy apple or whatever. And they would even have a parade. So that's what they did. By the time the, tw- the late 20s and 30s hits, ragamuffin day just whoo, disappears. And there's two reasons for this. One, the New York Times was like, this holiday needs to end because it's it's a distraction for adults and, and rich people find it so unsophisticated. And the second thing was the Great Depression. Uh, cause, because although it's jolly and fun to go around and ask people for stuff, because, um, because when the Great Depression hits in 1929, you've got people genuinely begging to survive. So the idea of dressing up as a poor person and begging for treats kind of loses its luster a wee bit. And you know, not only that, but people didn't really have the option, the ability to give away treats or goods or pennies, you know? They just didn't have it. So the term, so the term trick-or-treating, it, it appears during this time, but it doesn't really enter the foreground until like the 1940s, 1950s. Because in the 1950s, the baby boom, because it's in the 1950s that trick-or-treating really comes back with a passion. Really comes back with a passion. Basically because of post-war America. Because there's been a baby boom. Because what happens after every great horrific event? There is a baby boom. So there is a baby boom post-World War II. And especially in America and Canada. So because they were trying to make it more family friendly and fun and sort of boost this whole idea and they would dress up in costume and what really helps garner popularity is because it shows up on Disney cartoons you know the Peanuts comic strip and a bunch of like kids magazines and stuff like that and so like you know the parties start happening again neighborhoods get involved and it becomes basically what it is today kids going door to door in costume being handed chocolate being handed treats and candy and goodies. And so ends the story of trick or treating. Now, if you liked my retelling of this story, feel free to like and review five stars on Apple Podcasts or on any of your podcast hosting things you're listening on. It really, really helps me. You have no idea. If you rate and review, it makes all the difference and helps boost me up the charts. Really is amazing. Oh, don't forget you can follow me on social media. Links are in the description down below. And if you think, wow, I really loved what you did, tell me about. And if you think, wow, like, reviewing isn't enough for me. Following you on social media isn't enough. I need I need to help support this podcast financially. You can always join the Patreon, you know, for like subscription-based support or you can always go on to but for one-time options you can always buy me a coffee because i need the caffeine to keep me going or there's always paypal for those one-time things and yes again links are in the description down below and i want to say thank you so much for listening and i cannot wait for our next 
full tale because it is October, it is the spooky season and we have already covered the vampire, a cannibal and next we're moving on to a werewolf. Ooh, spooky. So I look forward to talking to you all about it next week. But I am going to go to bed now because it is late because I'm I'm not great at time management currently. So I'm going to bid you all good night. So adios, au revoir, au revoir to Zen, my friends. When you bundle your renters and auto insurance with Progressive, you could save money, but it doesn't cover any terrible memories living rent-free in your head. Hey, just wanted to remind you of that time your kicker missed the extra point and lost the game. Even though he literally never missed an extra point, he chose this playoff game to miss. Yeah, I just noticed you hadn't thought about that in a bit. Wouldn't want you to miss, you know, thinking about it. Sorry, we can't save you from that memory. But we could save you money bundling your renters and auto insurance with Progressive. Coverage from Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and third-party insurers. Renters insurance and bundle discount not available in all states or situations.